This is version 1.5 of the Speak For Yourself AAC app. And the biggest addition to this version is that we have added a history or data tracking feature. In order to get to that, what you would do is you would touch this little daisy settings icon. And you'll notice at the bottom that it says record history and then it has history here. So if you want to start recording what's said on the Speak For Yourself app, you would touch that and that turns it on. And then you'll notice that up here above the clear button, there's a little red dot. That lets you know that anything that's said on the app is going to be recorded. So um, you just wanna make sure that you let anybody who is going to be affected by that know. So if it's going home and um, whatever anyone at home says on it is going to be recorded, you just wanna notify everyone. And also um, let the student know so that they're aware that anything that they say on here, if they're having a private conversation with a friend or um, you know, something along those lines, you, they have the right also to know that it is being recorded anyway. Um, so the way that this works is anything that you say. I like you. I like you. Want. Cookie. Want cookie. More. Please. What it does is it registers an utterance any time that you touch the message window to speak the utterance. If you hit the clear button, so for example, when I said more please, or if I say want, want more. more, and I don't have to hit the message window if I just clear that, it's going to register that as an utterance. And also if you put something in to hold that thought, it'll register it as an utterance the first time when you're, you know, when you're building the utterance to put it in to hold that thought. And then when it pulls it back into the message window, it doesn't count it at that point because um, for, for the timing and everything, which I'll get to in a second. But now that you have a little bit of a language sample, if you went in here to where it says history, this is a history summary. And what that does is it gives you, it says the history summary since last reset, and it tells you the date and time to the hundredth of a second of the last reset. And then in that, it also gives you how um, many hours, minutes, and seconds Speak for Yourself has been active or showing on the screen. And it also gives you how long it's been inactive. So if you went out of it to go into another app or if the screen shut off, um, it gives the amount of time that it was inactive. It also has, it calculates the mean length of utterance. And um, the utterance count here so remember I said anytime you hit clear, if you remember when I said want more or more please, I didn't speak the message window. Um, so it, you know, it registers that that was also an utterance, um, whether you, you know, whatever, whichever of those things that, things that you do. Um, the words used, so I used in that little language sample, I used seven different words. The ones I used most frequently were more and want. I used each of those words two times, and then everything else is alphabetized. So if you used anything um, the same number of times, it's going to go alphabetical from there. The last measure that we have here for the language sample data is a communication rate in words per minute. That is not an actual measure of how many words the student, that the student said per minute. That's how quickly they're able to communicate which what that number is, is that if I was communicating nonstop, if I was accessing Speak For Yourself nonstop, I could access 27.9 words per minute based on how quickly I accessed the words from this little language sample. So as a child's or an adult's motor planning gets stronger, you would expect that number to increase. Now, if you go over here to the data, this is, what, this is more of the raw history data. So this is where you can see everything. So you could see I stopped recording history and then I started recording it again. I selected each of these words and then spoke the message, I like you, then I deleted it, then I said want, and then I selected cookie, and then I spoke want cookie. And then here is where if you're looking and you're saying, well, are they hitting the message window or are they just deleting it? Here you could see I said more please and then I just deleted it or want more and then deleted it. So I didn't actually speak, I didn't actually speak the message 
where you would see something like that up here. What you can also do with these is you can email this data. So if I wanted to, you know, I worked with a child and I wanted to email the results home to a parent or if I'm a parent and I, you know, took my child somewhere and I want to send their data to the speech language pathologist or the teacher, I can do that. You would just fill in the email here and it gives you a summary of the summary data. And then also with the raw history data, what you can do is you can touch this and you can email that. And what it does is it creates a, a comma separated value file. And that allows you to, if you're opening it on, on I'm sorry, if you're opening it on an iPad, it puts them into columns. It can also, if you have um, Microsoft Excel or Apple's numbers, when you double click on it, it'll open it right into one of those programs so that then you're able to, you know, sort through the data, get whatever you want out of that. So both of those are options on here. The other thing that we've added to this version is that you can turn the QWERTY key presses on and off. So when you're spelling a word, say I'm going to spell the word A L L. You hear how it says each of the letters. If you don't want to do that, you can, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you can turn that off. And now when I spell ball, ball, I'll still speak the word if I touch into the message window, but it won't say each of those letters. There have been some other minor bug fixes, updates to the voices, still no child's voice. I'm sorry. I know everybody um, has been asking about that, but, um, and, you know, of course, we've been asking voice company about that as well. But um, And also, we've redesigned the app for iOS 7. This will still work on any previous version, so don't, don't be worried about updating. If it's in iOS 6 or iOS 5, um, it will still work. It's just going to look a little bit different. Um, it'll just look like that version. So I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions at all, uh, you know, any feedback about more information that you would like to see or, um, you know, any suggestions that you have, we would love to hear them. Thank you.